If you're already planning on submitting the pictures of the two of you to the USCIS, you might as well do it right. In this video, I will be covering the types of photos the USCIS wants to see, the information these photos should include, and the right way to submit your photo evidence to the USCIS. And make sure to watch to the end where we will be giving away a very important tip. The types of photos that might make the USCIS think your case is fraudulent. Look, the USCIS already assumes every marriage case is fake, and you do not want to accidentally give them anything that supports that Bias. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Despite my husband and I being immigration lawyers, we also had to go through a challenging immigration journey, so we designed this channel to help ambitious professional couples handle their own marriage green card without hiring a traditional lawyer while avoiding all the mistakes that we've made. Okay, so before we get into how to submit photos to the USCIS and how to avoid accidentally making your case look fraudulent, let's start with the ways the USCIS can receive your photos. Or, in other words, the ways you can submit your photos to the USCIS. First, the way immigrant couples submit photo evidence is through Form I-130. This form is called the Petition for Alien Relative and it's used by the US citizen to establish their relationship to their foreign spouse. This is a very important part of the marriage green card application as it establishes one of the three core requirements that you are in a legitimate relationship with a U.S. citizen. And with this form, there are only two ways that you can submit your photos to the USCIS. First is online and second is on paper. And either way you choose, you will submit more than just photo evidence to the USCIS. This is where you will want to submit all of your bona fide marriage evidence and I really want to emphasize this point. So many couples come to us thinking that photos are the biggest part of their application, but it's actually considered to be a weaker type of evidence, although it is still very, very important. And if you're curious to know what exactly you should include aside from pictures, we've prepared an in-depth marriage evidence list that you can grab for free in the description below. When filing online, at the end of the application, you will see that there will be a section where you can upload all of the different types of evidence. And conveniently, the USCIS actually does guide you on what specific type of evidence to upload and in which section. In contrast, when submitting on paper, you will need to print out your photos and organize everything yourself. The easiest way to do this is to create a cover letter that lists all of the bona fide marriage evidence you will be including and then organizing that evidence behind the cover letter. So then it probably makes more sense to submit your I-130 and photo evidence online, right? Especially considering that the filing fee for this form is now $50 cheaper than filing online. Not necessarily. We actually made a full breakdown on this and why paper filing is, in our opinion and experience better, that you can watch here. Ultimately, there are five reasons why paper filing is still the better way to go. First, the rest of your application, meaning every form other than Form I-130, must still be filed on paper when we're talking about marriage adjustment of status, of course. This means that you're splitting your application packet up between online and on paper. Second, by splitting up your application, you're introducing an additional layer of complexity that can cause your application to be processed in a less streamlined way than if it were to be combined all in one document. Third, you still want to have a complete copy of your application packet for reference and ease of responding to any RFEs, and that means there is an additional layer of confusion when filing just one form online. And fourth, USCIS officers have been processing cases filed solely on paper only until recently with the introduction of Form I-130 online filing. This means that these officers might be less experienced with viewing and evaluating online filed applications. But the biggest reason why you wouldn't want to separate these forms is because the USCIS can be really bad at connecting the dots between an online file I-130 and paper filed I-485. You should 100% check the video mentioned previously since we talk about some specific examples which are basically worst case scenarios that sometimes happen which is what you definitely want to avoid. But do you have any specific questions on any of this? Make sure to drop them in the comments. Now let's get into discussing your photo evidence. Even if you decide to hire a lawyer, you're going to be the one collecting all the evidence. So it's important to understand what exactly you should include and how to properly submit them to the USCIS for when it's time to review your lawyer's work and that final application. So first, how actually important are those pictures? Pictures are in fact important, but they're considered to be a weaker type of evidence. Why? Because in the USCIS eyes, technically speaking, your pictures can be faked or staged, whatever. Either way, though, you should consider that they're still necessary to include, especially considering that a real human will be viewing them in order to determine whether you and your spouse are in a real relationship. This is where you can show your life beyond what's on paper. Think about it. 
When you submit your forms and the rest of your evidence to the USCIS, all they see are receipts, different words, different numbers, but pictures are where you can put real faces to all of those letters and numbers on paper. Always, always, always consider the importance of the human element here. So then the next thing is how many pictures should you include? Please don't fall for the old rumor of including 100 pictures per year of the relationship. We will get into exactly why this is potentially dangerous advice when we discuss how pictures can make your relationship look fake. Generally speaking, speaking though, we wouldn't include more than 20-30 photos with your initial application and be sure to include photos from different times and settings. Remember, you can always supplement your application later. Additionally, include photos with other people present such as your family members and friends. Also remember that you will want to continue collecting photos even after you submit your application so you can supplement it later on at your interview if you have one or inside the USCIS online account. Which by the way, did you know that you can supplement your application online after submission? It's an important consideration and the main reason why you should keep collecting evidence even after you've submitted your initial application. And finally, how to properly submit your pictures to the USCIS. This includes three things. Number one, how to format your pictures. Number two, what information to include on your photos. And number three, how to properly include it with your application so it's accepted. Starting with number one, formatting your pictures is actually quite simple. The easiest way is to include your pictures on a Google Doc or Word document. You can also print it out on photo paper, but a Word document makes it so much more convenient. Each page can include a title such as bona fide marriage photos, page one, page two, and so on. And then you would just print out the pages to include with your form I-130. But then should you include one, two, three, or more pictures per page? Members of our program have built beautiful collages and included multiple photos on one page, especially if it was from one event and many people were involved. And that's honestly a great approach and we've been seeing a lot of success with doing it this way. Which by the way, if you are an ambitious and professional immigrant couple who want to learn all the tips, latest trends and strategies used by other immigrant couples who've successfully navigated this journey, we encourage you to schedule a free strategy session with us to see if our marriage immigration method is right for you. Successful admission to our program means joining a fast-growing private immigrant community or all going through the exact same process as you, access to our one-of-a-kind step-by-step guide through your entire immigration journey and constant access and support from us and our team. Look, although we 100% believe that you can handle this process yourself without any assistance, we also know that you're dealing with the USCIS for the first time and at least in the marriage adjustment capacity and you will experience a ton of stress and second guessing as you go along on top of making mistakes that can easily be avoided. But going back to pictures, it's just important to consider that you will want your pictures to be easily viewable with obviously good quality. So while there is no maximum to the number of pictures you can include per page, you will want to use your best judgment to not overdo it. Alternatively, you could just have one photo per page as well. That's fine. There's no hard and fast rule when it comes to this. Ultimately, you always want to consider the human element here and draw a healthy balance between viewability, quality, and amount of paper. To the second point, what information should you consider including with your pictures? Just the short description is more than enough to give an officer an idea of how you guys spend your time together. This in could include the dates, the event, the location, the names of other people in the pictures and their relationship to both of you. Look, you do not need to go crazy here, but rather just provide some context, maybe one to two sentences, nothing crazy. And here's a pro tip. By including this information, you also better prepare yourself for the interview. You will not need to remember the context of the top of your head while under the pressure of the interview. Having this little bit of context helps the officer understand your relationship and assist you in understanding your case. Finally, not all pictures are created equally. Some contribute more than others to successfully advancing your case. So what types of photos are the most compelling? First, you're going to want to submit photos that show other people. Why? Because the USCIS wants to know if other people know about your relationship. These people should be friends and family over acquaintances and just random people. Second, you will definitely want to include photos from your marriage ceremony. And it truly doesn't matter if you only had a courthouse wedding. Some couples think they need to arrange some big and formal wedding, but if it becomes too financially consuming and burdening, it might not be necessary. Weddings are expensive and lots of people simply get married at the courthouse and maybe later have a ceremony 
in another foreign country, let's imagine, or even in the US, but just a few months later. You know, it can be quite challenging for some people to attend a wedding in the US because they first need to get a visa, which specifically applies to foreign spouses and their family members, so the USCIS obviously understands that as well. But either way, include some photos from the big day, whether you're having a big ceremony or not. Finally, include some photos demonstrating your life together. This can be from travels you've taken, hikes you've gone on, paths you share, maybe you two at your new house or a port and even funny selfies you've taken while sitting on the park bench or whatever it is. Again, it's about showing you both and your relationship in its most real form. The more real and genuine those photos are, the more real and genuine your relationship looks. However, this isn't the end of things. Submitting pictures should be simple and straightforward, but there are some major errors you need to avoid if you want to get through this process without delays or worse, appearing like your relationship is not real. But here's what not to do when submitting your pictures. Before we get into into how to avoid raising red flags with your pictures, the first thing to understand is the things to avoid that can cause you to receive a request for evidence. First, you're not going to want to submit multiple photos from the same day or event. Seriously, do not submit 10 pictures from the same photo shoot. If you're submitting a moderate amount of pictures, including multiple pictures from the same day or event, it can just cause the officer to feel like you don't have many pictures together. This is one way the officer could pause reviewing the remainder of your case by sending your request for additional evidence. Just understand that it's much easier for officers to push your case back to you for additional supplementation and to move forward with a decision. Obviously, this would also depend on what other evidence you've submitted, but just be mindful that we've seen a ton of RFEs on Form I-130 asking for additional bona fide marriage evidence lately, especially because the USCIS is trying to waive as many interviews as possible, so an RFE is something you would definitely want to avoid. Second, you should not include any flash drives or videos. The USCIS will not be able to access that information and depending on how much evidence you have included on the drive or in the video, it can render your application to be incomplete. Thus, you will cause yourself an unnecessary request for evidence. Third, what about organizational things like albums, plastic sheet coverings, paper clips, or staples? This is another thing you should avoid at all costs. It might sound strange considering your application will likely span into the several hundreds of pages and some organizational elements would help ensure important information stays together. Unfortunately, that's where understanding how the USCIS operates is so important. They will scan your entire file to include it in their system. By including these kinds of things with your application, you introduce a deviation that can negatively impact the processing of your case. They won't even attempt to accommodate your case because understand immigration has a 9.5 million case backlog and they simply do not have the time to make any exceptions. Thus, they will automatically push back your application again, just wasting your time and potentially money. And fourth, while this won't necessarily cause a request for evidence on its own, you should consider sending color photos to the USCIS. This is because color is more appealing and catches attention more easily. When considering a human being is looking through your evidence, you want to make sure that you're able to capture their attention as much as possible so they really receive an imprint of who you both are. This can go a long way in putting faces to the pages and give you both a greater chance of being seen as a legitimate couple. Finally, couples and lawyers can easily raise red flags with the USCIS. Here are the top three things to avoid. First, many lawyers choose not to submit any marriage evidence with the application, instead opting to bring that evidence to the interview. Now, that used to be a partially viable option in the past, however, we've seen an uptick in requests for evidence and notices of intent to deny or noids. Noids are particularly problematic because they bypass the request for evidence and essentially give you the one opportunity to fix the issue or the USCIS will deny your case. Why? Because by not submitting any evidence, you firstly can demonstrate your relationship to the officer and secondly, you are to be in a fake marriage. Basically, not including evidence suggests that there is no evidence of the relationship. We're still seeing cases filed through law firms where the law firm advised the couple not to include any evidence, photographic or otherwise, and just bring it to the interview. Those are the ones that often trigger noise, so make sure you've included plenty of evidence with your initial application and insist on it even if your attorney is telling you otherwise. On the other hand, many lawyers also still hold on to the old rumor that you should include 100 pictures per year of marriage. Now, that's a significant amount compared to like 20, 30, maybe 40 photos we've seen to generate success for immigrant couples. While you may indeed have a genuine relationship and a lot of photos to show for it, submitting so many can also be seen as an indication of fraud. 
Referring to the USCIS fraud referral sheet, including so many pictures, falls right under the oversubmission category. That's right, while the USCIS does not provide a number of photos to follow, they do include a general oversubmission red flag. And keep in mind, this goes for all evidence, not just photos. However, consider that couples often put more importance on photos than the USCIS does regarding providing a real relationship and how receiving hundreds and hundreds of photos may be perceived by the reviewing officer. Finally, there are three additional red flags on the fraud referral sheet that you can check out using the link we've included below, but there's an even more important red flag to watch out for. and the USCIS doesn't even let you know what it is. If you navigate to the end of the fraud referral sheet, you will notice there is an empty box titled Other Fraud Indicators Identified. Please specify. This is where the reviewing officer can list any red flags they perceive about your case. Now, considering that it's the USCIS presumption that every marriage case is fake, this is where that bias mixes with the human element. So what exactly does that mean for you? It means that you need to carefully review your photographic and other evidence holistically to see what the likely first impression would be regarding whether your relationship appears real or not from the information you or your lawyer is providing. Crafting a successful case is not just about cramming and full of evidence, rather it's about curating the right evidence and maintaining a healthy balance to accurately reflect your genuine and authentic relationship. And that is how you properly submit pictures to the USCIS. Thank you for watching and good luck! Give us a like and we'll look forward to seeing you next time!